If you want security for your family, for yourself, if you want to continue our great economic boom like we've never seen before, but it's all very fragile. It can end. They want to end it. Forget about the Fed. President Trump says that the biggest threat to the economy are the Democrats. Here to discuss National Taxpayer Union senior fellow Matty Doppler and liberal commentator Rob Tobin. You know, Matty, what struck me there was an admission by President Trump that despite the strength of this economy and the recovery, that it's fragile, that we cannot take it for granted. I think that's absolutely true, and I'm glad to hear the president say it. You know, he needs to remind Americans that it's not that long ago that we did not have the economic energy that we have right now. And that's th due to his reforms through tax reform, regulatory reform, making sure the United States is the best place to do business. But he needs to remind voters that, right? I mean, voters aren't thinking about this every day. They're out there running their businesses and feeding their families. And yes, their circumstances have improved, so it's easy to forget that it wasn't that long ago that we had policies that were putting us back into economic stagnation. So I'm glad to see the president reminding voters that that's the case. Hopefully over the next four weeks he continues to do so. Rob? Well, I'm kind of amazed that Donald Trump somehow thinks there are like three or four Democrats that are going to get elected to, to the House and they're going to turn us into Venezuela very quickly. I mean, I, Well, there are three or four running on the Venezuelan ticket. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what makes it. this country great. America doesn't have to be great again. It is great. We're going to have we have a diverse group of politicians that can be elected. That doesn't what, mean what is the what is the democratic economic platform these days, or is there one? Well, there isn't a unified platform, and that's something that oh, I always come complain on. about. I disagree with that. Hey, Charles, I can tell you exactly what the democratic economic platform is: is repealing the tax cuts that were put into law last year that finally gave the American family a chance to get ahead and put our communities a competitive again. The democratic have been absolutely unequivocal about that, that they want to repeal that tax cut first and foremost if they get power. That's the first thing you can expect from them. We have an extremely divisive president right now, Charles, who, when we're, we're dying for some bipartisanship, he makes us more partisan. We need the, we need uh, but, but both houses to work from, together with the president. If we need bipartisanship, how come that one Democrat voted for the tax cuts? Well, because the tax cuts weren't fair and they, they, they weren't bipartisan. It was just Trumpian. Come on, he's bringing Kanye West into the White House. My God, he, the, uh, the most feared man in the world for me is not Putin anymore. It's Kanye West. Why? Because it, he, may, he may get some blacks to leave the Democratic Party? No, not at all. I think that Trump could have done better and, and brought somebody more effective and like you. To, uh -oh. or, or and, You know, he, he, Kanye West is, is, is a joke, whether black, white, I, teal. I, I, I really, I vehemently disagree. You know, it's interesting. You might, might, I don't know if you ever listened to Richard Pryor. Uh, yes, I knew him very well. One time Richard Pryor had a skit about Leon Spinks, and he said when, 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 when white people would tell him Leon Spinks was stupid, he would always pause and say, what would they think about me if I agree? And I'm not trying to make this a racial thing, but why are you putting a guy who came from nothing, became a self-made millionaire, has influenced fashion, music, and everything else, why are you dissing him so much? I think that Kanye's just out of his realm. And he, he's he's not talking about policy. He's talking he about talk, something he talked about education. that the Maharaj would policy. talk about. No, he didn't. He talked about a lot of things. But I, I, we're going to talk about that more in the next block. But Maddie, I do want to get back to this idea that yeah. if if the if and the polls are looking like it, the GOP can can keep the House. What mm -hmm. is the likelihood of tax cut 2.0 so that maybe we can get a booster shot? Yeah, you asked why Democrats weren't voting for the tax cut. Well, in fact, some Democrats did vote for 2.0. Uh, in particular, Kristen Sinema, uh, as well as Jackie Rosen, both of whom are running statewide now. They're trying to get into the Senate. So I think that indicates to you exactly when it comes down to brass tax, Democrats are willing to vote for tax cuts when they have to get outside their own constituencies in their small little congressional districts and run statewide. They have to start think singing a different tune. You saw that with the 2.0 vote in the House. There's certainly an area for consensus when it comes to tax reform. There's a lot that was in that 2.0 bill that passed out of the House that the Senate could take up right. when it comes to retirement right. savings. There's a possibility it could happen. There's been plenty of right. bipartisan accomplishments over the past couple of weeks. If you don't think that's the case, you just haven't paid attention. And, and to be clear, I didn't say there were, uh, if it came across that I said a poll said the GOP was going to keep the House. I'm saying polls have said the GOP has made significant gains, whether it's uh, NPR, whether it's Fox News, whether it's Morning Consult, whatever you are, whatever poll you read, all of them say the same thing. There's a red wave coming, and maybe...
the GOP keeps the house. All right, folks, we got to leave it there. Hey, we've got a Good new chapter in that Trump uh, Kanye bromance. The rapper did indeed visit President Trump today, and he talked about prison reform. He talked about why some youth may join gangs. He talked about education.